Welcome back to the show, everybody. On the video chat, we have Kira Koster, and if she looks familiar, she may be familiar from many things. The Thundermans, of course, a uh, show on Nickelodeon that ran for quite a few seasons. Also, her burgeoning music career that she's in the middle of right now. Kira, thanks for being on the show. Indeed. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. No problem. As I said before, uh, we start recording. I appreciate you taking the time. Everybody and their mother has a podcast these days, and uh, <laughs> again, for lack of a better phrase, bona fide celebrities are not exactly clamoring when they hear, hey, you want to be on the Stoner Jesus show? Then most of them are not like, hey, yeah, that sounds like something that's going to be really stellar for my career. <laughs> Listen, you know what? You hit me up on Twitter and I was like, hey, why not? We're in, we're in quarantine. Why not Absolutely. You know, hang out on the internet? <laughs> it definitely helps. I got, uh, I got people trapped in their house. Uh, I will say, though, a couple times in, in the course of the show, and I'll give these people shout outs, some actual celebrities and not just cam models or cannabis people or comedians or whatever came on the show. Michael Rosenbaum, who was uh, Lex Luthor on Smallville, he came on the show. He was a really yeah. cool dude. He was doing a right. media blitz for Impastor, which I think was an underrated show. It only got two seasons, which was disappointing. Uh, and my favorite, may he rest in peace, the wonderful John Dunsworth, who played 12 seasons of Mr. Leahy on the Trailer Park Boys. Awesome guy, very interesting dude. Uh, that was uh, probably the highlight, one of the highlights of the show that I've done. And another one is right here in front of us having Kira Kosarin on the show. Um, how have the last couple months been for you? Is everybody in your life safe? Uh, how are things as far as the coronavirus yeah. going? Yeah, my, my parents both had it, um, wow. which was pretty awful. Um, they're they're recovering now, finally, which is great. I, I've been kind of just quarantining alone, waiting to be able to see them again. So super nice to be able to spend time with them again. Um, and yeah, I mean, you know, the first few weeks of quarantine were super strange, just figuring out this new way of life. But uh, the last month has been just full force finishing up my EP and getting these singles out and shooting some like quarantine style music videos and, you know, getting all the merch designed and like doing doing the damn thing, doing the whole rollout. So it's kept me very busy, which I'm grateful for. There's definitely been no boredom whatsoever in this quarantine for me. So yeah, it's definitely a great time with all the other stuff going on, a great time to be creative and really, you know, have the time to do a lot of things that you couldn't do uh, before. Obviously, the two major tracks of your career have been the acting and the music. Is that something that you grew up with at the same time or did one predate the other? How did that work out? Yeah, so I, I come from a theater family, actually. My parents both did Broadway. Um, and so I grew up kind of acting and singing and dancing were just like three parts of the same gig in my head. Um, kind of all equal. And then I moved to LA to start acting and just kind of training and pursuing all of the showbiz thing when I was like 12. And I was writing music the whole, my whole teenage years. Um, but people didn't know because I was working on this TV show and wasn't allowed to release any music. So I was just wow. shooting and making episodes and just enjoying acting as my career. And music was sort of just my diary. It was just like what I did in my spare time because I loved it and needed to do it to like stay sane. And then, uh, yeah, the show ended and I kind of took a look at my life and, you know, I was still enjoying acting, but I'd been playing the same character for like six years and I knew I needed to kind of take a break from it. And by this point I had written, you know, four albums worth of material. And I was like, well, I guess I might as well share some of them. I don't want to live in a voice memo on my phone for nobody but me to hear. And, and, and thus the transition began. And I, now, you know, I couldn't be happier the past two years of, of just being able to really focus on music have been incredible. And it's such a part of me. So I'm definitely going to keep, keep moving in this direction. Yeah, it definitely seems to be going well. And you seem to be just an incredibly talented, not only a singer, but a musician. How many uh, instruments do you play? Thank you. Uh, a few. Um, <laughs> I would say like proficiently, I play guitar and piano. Um, okay. I played flute in middle school band. I was first chair, what up? <laughs> um, and you know, how can screw around on a, a ukulele or a piccolo or you know, what other, whatever other version of the instruments I play. But yeah, it's music's just kind of always been a language in my house. And my dad is a really brilliant musician and taught me a lot of music theory and all that stuff when I was a kid. And so. It's kind of always stayed super on my radar, the music nerdness. Uh, so you've obviously taken a, a journey a lot of the, the quote unquote child stars have had to take from you, whether it's Nickelodeon or Disney or something else, the, the navigating, growing up, still in the spotlight. Mm -hmm. How have you handled that with, you know, the, now the overlapping fan bases and all that? Yeah. Um, I mean, it's definitely, it's a process. It's been a journey. Um, 
I think it's something where, you know, when I came off of working on that show for so long, I sort of had this desperate need to like not be seen that way anymore and like prove to everybody like I'm adult now. And, you know, I put out this record last year that was just super sexy and super cool and like super different. It's called off brand because it was so different than anything anyone knew me from. Um, and that was really fun, but it was also kind of my way of being like, hey, we out here. And now I've sort of grown past that where I'm like, I don't need to prove anything to anybody. Like all I can do is make the art that I know I love to make and hope that people will get on board. And like, I just, you know, I love having the support of, of people who watched me on TV. It's so special. It's amazing to have that like fan base and kind of internet family. But I am always really extra grateful when people are open and, you know, listen to my music with an open mind without any preconceived notions of who they knew me as on TV. I, I always am super grateful for that. So. Yeah. I'm sure that the uh, social media, especially someone who's visible as you are, has added another layer of not only the good, but you know, the weird and a lot of the stuff that you got to ignore and kind of, you know, how do you deal with like the negativity that comes your way on social media? Um, I mean, very early on, my parents sort of drilled into me, like, don't listen to your good press and don't listen to your bad press. Because if you listen to the good press, if you believe the good things that people say, you'll also find yourself believing the bad things. And to just remember that like the comments that people make on you when you're sort of a public persona are just that they're comments on your persona. They're not comments on who you actually are. And you know, that's something that I've tried to really remember as much as I am super open and, you know, share a lot of things about my life and my thoughts on the internet. There's definitely still a lot of my life that nobody knows, and I kind of like to keep it that way, keep a little bit of that separation. Yeah, I imagine it's definitely going to be difficult with because uh, everybody wants to know everything that's going on, and it's with and social media is so prevalent, especially with quarantine and all that. It's got to be it's got to be a lot of pressure sometimes, I would think. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I I, I definitely enjoy it just as much as it's difficult. Like there are just as yeah. many pros as cons to me. Um, you know, it's a great business tool. And at the end of the day, like I'm a 22 year old girl, like I like, I like Instagram, I like Twitter, you know, I like having different platforms for different things too. You know, my Instagram is a little bit more, you know, the polished thing, but my Twitter is where I can get a little bit more political or satirical or, you know, more con kind of commentary based. And, you know, I like having those different sections of the internet where, you know, maybe younger kids follow me on Instagram, but like I can talk to teens and 20 somethings on Twitter and have more real conversations and, and that kind of stuff. So I try to just lean into the side of social media that I find inspiring and supportive and engaging and, and you know, nice and try to stay away from the junk. Yeah, that's definitely a good attitude to have. Uh, as we, uh, as I transition talking about uh, adult things and politics, uh, obviously yeah. my whole gimmick here is uh, cannabis related. <laughs> Indeed. And we ask everybody about uh, their thoughts on cannabis legalization uh, in general. Do you have any strong thoughts on that or any thoughts at all? Yeah, I mean, I live in L.A. Um, where cannabis is not only legal, but it is right now considered an essential business. Um, and so I definitely think in light of that, it's about damn time that we get some people who are incarcerated for nonviolent marijuana offenses out of jail, for sure. I think it's ridiculous that that's still a thing. Um I think that, that that whole part of the war on drugs that just completely, you know, disproportionately affects minorities and has been used as a weapon in many ways is, is tragic. And I think that we're getting to the point as a society where that just shouldn't be the case anymore. I know people have differing opinions on expunging, you know, legal records. I know that that's a super polarizing thing, which I get. But um, yeah, I definitely think if anything, like in this pandemic, seeing it deemed uh, a, you know, essential business as I think it should be, you know, it's, um, it definitely feels like it's time to, to move past that. Yes, definitely. Uh, we've definitely created an odd, odd patchwork of, of laws and rules and regulations across the country yeah. when it comes to, the, to cannabis. Right. The difference between the federal government and the state mm -hmm. government too makes things tricky. And again, it's like, you know, I understand why states' rights are a thing and the balance of power. And there's, you know, there's logic and reasoning behind all of it. But in practice, it makes for a very, a very tricky situation. So yeah, and definitely when it comes to uh, federal legalization, it's something that has to happen regardless, because there's only so much the states are going to be able to do. And there's always going to be right. politicians in other states that say, well, we can't do this until the federal government moves on it. And it's really a, a cluster F of, uh, of competing 
interest. And now with the pandemic, with everything's been put on hold and a lot of signature gathering drives, it's uh, it's definitely a, a weird time. But it's it's always good to hear people yeah. advocating for you know. Yeah. And definitely, definitely pro at least decriminalization. I, and I think you know legalization plus. I you know the opiate crisis in America is, is so disastrous, and I think that legalization would definitely help <laughs> with that. I think if you're looking at different drugs that could be prescribed and used, you know, there's definitely a lot of merit to uh, more natural substances than things that get people very, very hooked in very, very bad situations. Absolutely. So, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I, 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 I think had things moved differently politically in the past few years, it probably would have been something that we saw happen fairly quickly. Now I'm not so sure if or when it's going to happen, but we'll see. <laughs> yeah, things are a bit unpredictable when it comes to the federal government in certain areas. <laughs> That's for oh, sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just a little, uh, a little unpredictability. Really? A little, uh, yeah. Don't know what's going to happen. And then with all this, it's really, it's incredibly unpredictable. Um, as much as you can make plans moving forward, what are your plans as far as, you know, the EP and possible touring and all that? Yeah. So touring is obviously completely up in the air right now. Um, I, you know, I, I had my first rehearsal with my new band right before this all started. So as soon as we're allowed to go play live shows and more than that, as soon as it's safe and feels responsible and appropriate, cause you know, realistically, like. I'm going to listen to what people say is is right, but I'm still going to err on the side of caution when it comes to all of this, just because I think it's a smart thing to do. Um, but eventually, I would love to get back on the road and get to touring. In the meanwhile, I'm doing hella live streams on Instagram. My Instagram and Twitter are Catherine, and if you want to come see me play a bunch of songs in my apartment, um, it's honestly a super fun time. Like. I read all the comments while I'm playing and sometimes I just stop playing to respond and then keep singing. And it just, it's super intimate and fun and like feels like we're all hanging out in my living room, which I love. Um, the EP is coming out the end of June. Something to look forward to, as you can see, drops this week on Wednesday night. And then there's another single three weeks later. Um, something to look forward to. I'm really happy that I'm in a position that I'm able to put it out right now because uh, I wrote it January of last year when I was going through kind of a, a dark, tough, depressive time in my life. Um, and this song sort of came out of that very real place and sort of been holding on to it for a long time. And now a lot of those kind of feelings of uncertainty and not knowing what the future holds and, you know, wishing that there were a more concrete plan translate super well into what's happening in quarantine. And the song has sort of taken on a whole new meaning. And I hope that it resonates with people in that sort of way. Um, and we shot a little quarantine style music video for it in my parents' living room, which I'm super excited about. I literally just approved the final edit this morning. So I think people will like it. Awesome. Kira, I want to thank yeah. you again for coming on the show uh, and, and enjoying the, the little bit of quarantine with us. <laughs> um, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Stoner Jesus. <laughs> no problem. Uh, anytime, you know, we'll be promoting you. Anytime you want to come on back on the show, talk about anything, just uh, let me know. We'll always be here. Sounds good. Have a good one, man. You too. Thanks, Kara.